What was the food like? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite repetitive. On a Sunday, we'd have like a Sunday roast. It wasn't, it wasn't great. What, some days we'd have pizza and that was all right. Um, a lot of the time we ordered in food. We get like yeah, Chinese well, like, in my hospital, you weren't allowed to order in, which is like a massive. Like, like yeah. we got Domino's and then we'd have to tell them the address and we'd be like, oh. Really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember just getting, we'd had like, we had Domino's, we had like Domino's and Monopoly night, and like, yeah. That was like a nice thing, because yeah. you were with like people who were really similar, like, yeah. you made such good friends with them, and you would just like kind of like dot around in the evenings. Mm. Yeah, that was really always nice. Yeah. So, like, they'd have like normal breakfast, like cereal. Se breakfast, fine. Okay. Yeah. Breakfast, spy. cereal, toast. And, and you'd then... toast right in the evening, oh at gosh. like 8 o'clock, and I'd annihilate the day. Yeah, like, I'd about like, nine o'clock, because oh obviously you have to take meds, so they you have to eat with meds, so, like, they oh give God, you is some... Oh, did it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did Yeah! I thought they were just like, I know the food's shit, so you can no. have, like, some taste. <laughs> no, it's like, oh, you have to, you have to eat, like, when you, like, when you take, have, yeah, yeah, when yeah. you have your medication, so, it's like, oh, and they make, like, literally, they have, like, a tray, like, this, this big, like, a huge <laughs> tray, <laughs> probably, <laughs> like, like two and a half, three loaves oh, of yeah. just bread, loaves. like toast or even. And it was really good. Like it was trashy really nice. white bread. Yeah. Right. It'd be like fly around, flies around shit when yeah. the toast came out. Everyone would like run to it. Everyone literally, they'd be like toast, 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 toast. toast. <laughs> and it was the most exciting part of your day. Yeah, literally the highlight of my day was toast. Toast and hot chocolate. Yeah, but it was just like dinner and lunch. Oh. Weren't great. No, I mean, especially dinner. And, and like since I'm vegetarian, like they only yeah. had like one option for like veggie, so like I'd be there with like some like moussaka shit, and I'd be yeah. like, oh, what is this? But I, I feel think it's like, just, like regular hospital food. Like, I feel it's like it's not the nice. type of food that doesn't give you energy, but just sits in your stomach. Yeah, and makes you gain loads of sh fucking weight. Yeah, like, see, well, I just like didn't eat it because it was so random. Yeah, like, that was like me in the first in my first mission. Then <laughs> by like my last mission, I was like, I'm <laughs> fucking <okay." laughs> like, give me all of it. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like any worse than like because I've been in like a general hospital. Yeah, no, it's the same thing. It's it's just the not same thing. great. Yeah, it's just but, you know. It's but like I used to get like my friends and family to like bring food. Yeah, like you could have. And food food they can, exactly. Food, yeah. So I like to have them bring in like smoothies and like fruit and stuff. Oh, so you're so good. That. I have mine like M and M. I mean, sometimes I have like carrot chocolate. Like, yeah. <laughs> new old friendships. Well, new friendships. Like I made a lot of new friends. I think my my old friends were actually really supportive. Like they came to visit me a lot. Like they were at uni and everything. But yeah, so they came to visit and like cheer me up and like they take me out to Costa and stuff like that. Um, I think like. It does put like a strain on it because Definitely. they haven't been in that position, so obviously they don't really like understand it that much. Even though like my friends like really tried to understand it, they were really great. Yeah. And um, but they wouldn't like. I didn't feel like I could tell them things because I thought they'd think like I was really weird or mm. like, I was like crazy <laughs> or something like that. Like. So I felt a bit. Yeah. I don't know. It put like a little bit of a strain on our friendship. No, definitely. Me. I but, think I was really lucky. Like. I definitely think I lost friends due yeah. to being in hospital and being ill. But um, the friends that have remained are, like, the best people. Yeah, know. exactly. You kind of, like, weed out the weeds. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have, like... And yeah. then you're, like, left with, like, your really, like, yeah. best friends. Yeah. Who, like, come and visit you, like, cheer up. Yeah. Like, FaceTime you. Like, yeah. Phone you. I remember being... know that they're there. Like, yeah. even if they're not there in person, they're, like, supporting you, like, yeah. no matter whatever like I remember no like my best friend from school she came up to visit me when I just before I was put into psychiatric hospital I was in like a general and they were like brought me magazines oh and, like, yeah they brought me like a big bag of breaks <laughs> like, yeah, that's what you like, do random like, people yeah, yeah literally like yeah like they weren't allowed to bring me flowers because I don't know you're not allowed flowers in general hospitals or something yeah but um yeah no like they put in like a lot of effort and then mm. it made me realize that like they well I already knew they were really good friends yeah them, but like, it was really, like, yeah. it was really nice to know that I had them there before I made all my friends in the psychiatric hospital. Mm -hmm. Before I made all my new yeah. friends. Like, it was nice to know that they were there. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But I think it is really hard for them. Yeah, I think it's really us. hard for families as well. Yeah. Like, I just think it's, it's just, it's really, just a shit It's just a shit situation. Yeah, it is. 
But like for me personally, like my family and friends dealt with it really well. And my yeah. friends, like they couldn't they couldn't have done any more really. No, like, I, mine are exactly the same, but I can tell they're just fucking tired of the <laughs> They're like, come on, get your shit together, Marie. <laughs> I literally <laughs> Right. The worst thing the worst thing about hospital <sighs> lack of privacy. Maybe? Lack of freedom. Lack of freedom. Value. Just, like, lack of, like, normal living. You become so institutionalised as well. I definitely felt that on my first admission. Definitely. Where you just become so used to getting up in the morning. Yeah, and getting up in the morning. Breakfast at 8. Yeah. Lunch at 12. Yeah. Dinner at 5.30. Toast at 8. Yeah. Like... Yeah, that was it. And just watching Jeremy Carl all day. And yeah, and like, all day. And like there would be like an activity worker who'd come in for maybe like a couple of hours. Yeah, like, like, like twice maybe like twice a week, a week yeah. or something. And you'd do like kind of like shitty projects and like that. So there was an art room. Yeah. So we spent like all our time in the art room together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which was nice for like the last few days yeah. before I was discharged. Yeah. And like we made like inspirational points. Yeah. And like artists like me, like yeah. we took it very seriously. We did. So, like lo- lots of artistic pieces. Yeah. Like Yeah. That kind of kept us busy. Yeah. I think you have to kind of you find your own entertainment that like, they don't. I think that's another really question is like what's the routine? Like, is it like therapy based? Is it yeah. not? And from my experience, I know this is obviously very different to if you go to a private hospital. Or, like, a long-term, like, long-stay hospital, you know, where yeah, you're like, there for, like, 18 months Yeah, like, my friend's at, like, a rehab centre yeah. for, like, mental illness. Yeah. <laughs> Illnesses. <laughs> yeah, and, but this is kind of, like, an acute ward, so it's, like, almost they kind like... They want you in and out. Yeah, basically. basically. Yeah, basically. Um, so there wasn't really much therapy. I mean, I had, like, I think I had three sessions of CBT. Yeah when I first went into hospital with the, like, the ward psychologist. Yeah. Uh, that's the, the only thing I've ever had, really. Yeah. Unless it was, like, something from the community that came into hospital. Exactly. Yeah. Like, that wasn't, yeah. So when I was in the, my first admission, I saw the psychologist yeah. once a week. And we just kind of... I only saw her, like, twice. Really? And then she asked me, she went, what are you still doing here? And I was like, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> she was like... <laughs> really lovely yeah i don't know whether it really helped that much I, I mean it probably kind of helped at the time but long term it didn't really do anything no yeah so second admission i didn't see anyone pretty much the whole time i was in there mm-hmm. um until like september so i was discharged on the 29th of september so probably like mid-september they had referred me for this thing called dbt so it's dialectical behavioral therapy and you've just started it i started it in september and then no, I was in November, pre-treatment, yeah. and then I properly started in November, so I'm going to, it's a whole year, so I'm going to finish in November, so I'm kind of halfway through, and it's, it basically, it doesn't, like, cure you, it, it makes it a lot Teach you how easier to, to deal with, yeah. it makes it so much, yeah. so I was telling my therapist the other day, like, if I didn't have DBT, I would 100% be back in hospital, like, definitely, mm. and it gives you, like, so many skills to deal with, like, you know, like, distress tolerance. So when you're feeling really shit, like, you know, sometimes you can't get rid of it mm. and you just have to sit with it and you have to find ways to deal with it until it subsides because it doesn't last forever. Yeah. And there's there's loads of, like, mindfulness and being in the moment and participating in the moment and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And it's really, like, I would very highly recommend DBT. Yeah. Like, 100%. Like, it's helped me... Like, I can't even describe. Yeah. Like, I'm not back in hospital because I have DBT, for sure. Yeah. And now it's a bit more like, I've got a job now, and, mm. like, I've got responsibilities back, and... So now, like, it's kind of, like, life, like, and I don't want to be back in there, but... Yeah, definitely. DBT helped, like, yeah, so much. But I didn't have that. It took seven months of me being in hospital to actually get that help. Yeah, well, for me, I've been in hospital for, like... Like in and out for <laughs> like two years, and then um, um, yeah, they didn't have it like where I live because we live in different places. Yeah. but um, they've only just got like they literally got it in like March, and then I, I like, got it like we two weeks really later. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> first on the list. <laughs> so yeah, I was really lucky to get it too. And it's really it's yeah. Like, well, it, I haven't really it started will be, it, but yeah. I feel like it will hopefully make a difference. 
Well, I think because I've seen it work so much with you, it gives me it will give me motivation. Yeah, because yeah. it's like really hard. Like therapy's like not easy. It's oh, difficult. No. Oh god, no. It's yeah. yeah it's really not. I it's think there's hard. a misconception that you just go. But you, you go talk to therapy about and you worry. get better and everything's like yeah. great. Yeah. And it's like, like really well. Like it's that. not like I tell my therapist everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like she's like I've got like a pretty great therapist. Yeah. But it's it's like not easy. Like sometimes I go and I'm like I really don't want to do it. Yeah. Like I make myself go. I have like individual therapy for an hour a week and then I. Have group therapy for two hours a week yeah and group is like it's a nice because you meet people who are very similar to you yeah and it's probably like the most non-judgmental space that i've been in so mm-hmm. i don't i don't i'm a very self-conscious person yeah and i get very nervous of like what i'm saying and i think like people are going to judge me mm-hmm. and but now like when i'm there like that's the only place where i can like speak my mind like yeah. and i know that other people aren't going to say anything yeah because they're all in like the same position or like similar yeah. positions yeah exactly but yeah, so group therapy is like, sometimes I don't like, like going, but it doesn't yeah, help. Yeah, yeah. I hate yeah. to admit it, but it doesn't yeah. help. <laughs> what gets taken off you? Oh, oh fucking fuck. everything. <laughs> so when I first went in, they took off, so I had like medication with me. Yeah. So they took, obviously, all obviously of that off. Take that, yeah. They took like my tweezers. Um, I I hid my headphones because I just wanted to listen to yeah, music. Yeah, you're not allowed headphones. Not really. allowed, wasn't allowed like, unless you like build up a trust. Yeah, shoes with like laces in, obviously. Mm. And then like random shit. They took like my shampoo and conditioner and body wash yeah. off me. They took my E45 cream off me, <laughs> and I was pretty pissed about that. Uh, what's the white stuff called? E4- Sudocrem. <laughs> and I mean like Sudocrem's used for like like nappy rushes and that. Yeah. So and I mean I put it on my face like to help with my skin. Yeah. And so they'd be like, <laughs> they'd be in the clinic, and I'm like, oh, can I have some more pseudochrome? And they'd be like, Marie, can you not do that in the clinic? <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be like, what? 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 <laughs> and I remember the first week I was at, I was literally like, what the fuck? Like, why are you taking this off me? Like, what am I going to do yeah. with it? Like, not like, am I going to eat it? No, of course I'm not. Yeah. And then it was only when the deputy war manager came in. It was the first time I met her. And she was like, she was like, why have we got this? And I was like, I don't know. You tell me. Yeah. And then she gave it back to me. And yeah. I was like, all right. But yeah. it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. Yeah. It depends also what type of hospital you're in. Like when you're in an acute ward, they're a lot more lenient than when you're in a PQ, which was oh, like, yeah. I wasn't allowed bottle caps. And yeah. I was like, why am I not allowed <laughs> bottle caps? And they were like, well, I'm not going to teach you how to make stuff. <laughs> I was like, and I remember I gave, I like, I went to visit and I gave oh, you yeah. like some like words etches and shit like yeah. that. And they took like the staples out of yeah, the magazine. Like, ridiculously. <laughs> and I was like, and then you oh, gave yeah. it back to me the other day and I picked it up and it just like all fell apart. <laughs> yeah, like you weren't allowed anything. Like literally yeah. like hairbrushes, toothbrushes, no, not allowed it. Because that's like the in like intensive care. Yeah, so. And there's not very like, many beds. No, you so weren't So I Willow Vale, which was, well, the ward that I was on was... 16 beds I yeah. think and that was like pretty like reasonable Normal. yeah I think and then, 16 to 20 yeah normally. and the PQ next door had five four or five four or five <laughs> yeah so but um both of them were all female yeah all so female. I was really glad really happy that they were all female to yeah. be honest I was really like relieved yeah because I would like meet like the men downstairs and obviously like they were like perfectly nice but mm-hmm. I definitely wouldn't have felt like, comfortable living like, with them you know, like, when, like, I went to the toilet when I was on level three and they had, yeah. like, the door open, like, I wouldn't feel comfortable with, like, men walking around. Yeah. And, and, like, when I, like, just got out of the shower and stuff and I'd be, like, changing in my bedroom. Yeah. You know? Like, it doesn't really matter if, like, no, yeah. Like, see, you know? yeah. But I definitely would have felt quite uncomfortable. So I'm really yeah. glad that it was an awful yeah, so And I think they, they're quite big on that now. Yeah, they are. They I don't know any yeah. wards that are mixed anymore. No. But yeah, they no. used to be mixed, like, someone who was, who I knew yeah. was in hospital a couple Same. of days ago was she was on a mix yeah was, and I'm, yeah, I'm really like, I mean when I first went into hospital a girl that I knew came up from the PQ and it was mixed then that was two years yeah, ago no, the PQ, yeah the PQ was mixed when yeah. I was first in yeah there. yeah when I yeah, was first exactly. in the yeah. one next door yeah it was mixed and then they started changing yeah. it so, so yeah that was definitely like a good mm. thing about it for sure what are the rooms like they're okay, basically so they're like very prison cells yeah yeah they're like they ain't great <laughs> you basically get a bed and like some shelves and you get well you get um the on my ward that i was on there's a, the first corridor there's so there's like the office then there's corridor and it's kind of in a u shape then another corridor then another corridor yeah so it goes like all the way around yeah and the and like the more trusted you are the further away from the office you go mm. so the first five beds are kind of like the observation corridor yeah so when you first go in when i first went in i was on that yeah corridor. Same. 
And um, room number one. <laughs> yeah, I was room number five. Yeah, and I was room number four. Yeah, and then I was room number seven. <laughs> room number eight. Room number ten. <laughs> room number thirteen. Room number fifteen. <laughs> That's so funny. No, I was one and no, actually I was thirteen. I must stole my desk. Yeah, I did. Bitch. <laughs> And then, so that was like the observation corner, and that's like where you don't really have anything. So you don't have like a chest of drawers or anything. You have this like oh yeah, you, thin wardrobe which basically has like two slats in. Yeah, and no door. Clothes. Yeah, no door for it. Like I had a chair in there, but a lot of times you don't have a chair in there. Yeah, I had a chair. And then this basically just like a sink, but with buttons. Oh, so you just pressed things. it, and like the water would come, and then you just have to like wait for it to turn off itself. Yeah. And then when you move round, you have like a mirror and like a light above the mirror. And you had a, like drawers next to you, like a bedside table kind of thing. Um, and then you had taps. Oh, having taps was like a luxury. Privilege. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Had a little cupboard underneath the sink. Yeah, and taps was great. And yeah. the mirror, oh my God, saved my life. Mm-hmm. Like, it was so much better. Yeah. So like the more you're trusted, the more you go. Yeah, around, that's, it, it, te- it depends on which hospital though as well. Yeah. Because yeah. like, I was in a different hospital where like all the bedrooms were the same like there was no like observation thing yeah and you got an ensuite as well which was such yeah, a so good we thing we had to share bathrooms and toilets oh, I hated and so it was like it was pretty like it's the great, most disgusting honest. thing there's always one patient that loves to block the toilet yeah or loves to just wee on the floor <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it's yeah it's like obviously because everyone's quite ill like yeah. the behavior is like not really the norm yeah so, you know, people, like, would sometimes, like, wee on the floor and it wouldn't be, like... Or shit in the sink. <laughs> or shit in the sink. That was probably, like, an all-time no, <laughs> to be honest. But I didn't really know whether to laugh or cry, and I was like, I am going to cry if I don't laugh. So I just started laughing, and it was really funny. But, I mean, I didn't have to clear it up. I just avoided that bathroom for the next, like, couple of weeks. Yeah. It was, yeah, rank. Ugh. But, yeah, it was horrible having to share a bathroom. No, I really I, didn't like no, it no. at all. No. There was, like... But there was like one like wet room, then there was a toilet, and then there was like a bathroom with an actual bath in, which was quite good. But I never yeah. used it. And then right around the end, there was a shower room, and that was yeah, that's that the one that I used as well, yeah. But I mean, for like sixteen women to share like not that many bathrooms and toilets, and I mean, there's only like there. one main toilet that they always had unlocked. Yeah, and you that's had to, was you had to ask to unlock them. People would smoke inside as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I weren't that fun. <laughs> But, I mean, it was entertaining. <laughs> What's it like coming out of hospital and discharge? It's scary as hell. It's really scary. Yeah. Because, especially if you've been there, if been in there, because we've both had quite long admissions. Yeah. When you've been in there for so long, and they think you're ready, and you, you don't feel ready, but you know that you have to go, because you're never, like, if I was going to give anyone advice, like, you're never going to feel ready to mm. leave, I don't think. Yeah. Oh, I never felt ready. But you just, like, if you wait till you're ready, you're going to be waiting forever. Yeah. So you just got to go for it. you just got to do it. And you've got to grab all the support you possibly can. Like, yeah. You can't get, like, there's not, like, an awful lot of support, really. Like. I mean, I was lucky. I got, like, good support. A really support. good yeah. um, psychiatric nurse. Yeah, but it's, it's like, really literally the look of the draw. So, like, my um, psychiatric nurse... Like, he's perfectly nice, um, but I saw him, when I was discharged first time, I saw him once, and then, yeah. like, within, like, that week, I mean, I went to my GP, who was, like, amazing. Yeah. Um, and then I just, I ended up back in hospital, like, I couldn't cope, like, yeah. I didn't feel like I had enough support. So it was only when I had, like, DBT when I left the second yeah. time that really kept me out of hospital. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Yeah. But, yeah, it is. It's scary. You don't feel ready. And I'd also say, like, trust their guidance. If they're saying you're not ready to leave, you're probably not you're ready. Probably, yeah. Like, I was, I, I think I'm, like, one of the patients that are, like, because I hate being in the hospital so much that I'm, like, like pushing to get out. Yeah. See, I was and, kind of, like, the opposite. Like, yeah. I didn't like being there, but I felt like I needed. Yeah. I felt like I wouldn't have survived on, like, the yeah. outside, so I, like, had to be there. Yeah. Like, that's where I think our, even though we had very similar experiences, they differed in that type of way. I think yeah. I just, I just hated it. Like, I could have, like, the nicest people in there and still hate it. Yeah. I think because I, I, like, made a lot of friends and got on really well and yeah. stuff. It was well, you really kind of hard found your confidence there. Like, and that's the thing. Yeah. So I was really, like, I'm not a very confident person. Like, yeah. At school, like, I mean, I had, like, really good friends. Yeah. 
but I wasn't particularly like outgoing or yeah. like, anything like that. But when I was like in hospital, like I eventually, because like it's it's not very it's not a very judgmental place to be. No, exactly. It's, it's actually um, like a lot of people are really kind, really lovely. Yeah. The staff are like a laugh to be with. Yeah. So I was like, I was very like when I was feeling well. Yeah. I was very like chatty. Yeah. And, like joking. I'd have like bouncing yeah. and stuff and like. We had like a community meeting, and you basically all go into the dining room, and like yeah. you'd like thank people for stuff, yeah. and like and uh, you'd like give like advice on like how you could improve the ward. Yeah. And one of the HCAs was like, "Pip, do you have anything to say?" And I was like, "No." Why? She was like, "Well, you usually have something to say." And I was like, "Wow." Oh. <laughs> yeah, they let me bring my kids in, and that was when I was on level three, and I was feeling really low, and like that was like a pretty great thing. Yeah, I used to get my dog brought outside. Yeah, like when I was on outside. Really? Yeah, so that's. All the questions, I think. I mean, we've been recording for like nearly an hour. Minutes. <laughs> it's going to take a lot of editing. Yeah. I feel like that was good. I feel like we like explained a lot of things. I mean, this just... might go up in like two parts. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's something like because I would have been interested to know before I went in because I had I, I had no idea what to do. Yeah, like, I didn't know whether like I'd have to like. I didn't even know there was a psychiatric unit where I live. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't even know. I didn't even like. I'd been to some. Yeah. To see a crisis team. Christ shit team. <laughs> I didn't I didn't know anything and they told and the nurse who had assessed me and told me that I needed to go in was like telling me how scary they were. Yeah, I like, know like, this that as shit. Well. And I was like, fuck like I didn't know whether that we'd have like our own rooms or like, I didn't know if you were allowed your phone. And yeah. I was, the first night I was there, I was like, oh my phone like under the covers like I'm gonna <laughs> take this off me. I literally being I remember like asking like am I allowed to like come out of my room at night? Yeah. Like because like what if I need yeah, to toilet? Like, basically there are you, no rules. Yeah, I was like, do you lock our doors? Like yeah. and they were like, no, no, like it's it's I know, think they leave a lot scary. off when they tell you when they tell you. They don't tell you a lot of things basically. Yeah, I feel like no one really knows what it's like until you've been in there. And I think that's like really important to change that. Yeah. Because there's just like so many like Stigmas. Yeah, and misconceptions about it, and like, and I think people think they're really horrible, scary places. And you know, it's not like a great place to be, but it's like, it's like what, like it was worth it to go in there to get better, to get where I am. Yeah. Like to like get the therapy to actually help me to where I am now. Mm -hmm. like, I'm so much better than I was. Yeah. But it, yeah, like it's not great, but it's it's not what people think. No. At all. No. Like it's. It's nothing like what people think, I think. No. Yeah, yeah, so I think, like, it's good to try and, like, explain that. I think it would be interesting for other people, hopefully. Yeah, I, like, I hope you enjoyed it. No, this definitely, video. yeah. My first video, so. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely gonna need to edit out a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, I hope you enjoyed it. Like, I hope yeah. it was, like, informative and helpful or just, you know, interesting for other people, maybe. Yeah. Because I think I would have been really interested in this before, like, I went into the hospital. Yeah, same. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I will see you on my next video. Yeah. Who knows what that will be? Who knows? Mystery. <laughs>